Good morning, colleagues, and welcome to the session uh, run by my colleague, uh, HMI colleague, Peter Conley, on MetaSkills. MetaSkills, as the research tells us, is quite significant. It fits very well with the online environment. And what research tells us is the online environment is a good place to develop the meta skills around focusing, curiosity, creativity, sense making. Um, what developed years ago as uh, core skills, then essential skills, has moved forward. And I think the online environment also gives us a good opportunity to reflect on how we develop these skills that give our young people the skills for employment for the future. The format will include Peter doing a detailed presentation. And if anyone on the live session has any questions or comments, please put them in the chat and we'll try to pick those up at the end of the, the session at the discussion period. And if there's any points of clarification, we'll pick those up as we go along. So I'll now hand over to my colleague, Peter Cornley. Thanks, John. Um, and uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, great to see everyone coming to a session like this. Um, this session, uh, John had asked me to, to, to look at an important issue um, in education and, it, and meta skills is certainly one of those at the moment. And I'm, what I'm going to do is kind of, uh, this presentation will look at the context at the moment and how important meta skills are uh, in the kind of landscape of, of education and skills. Um, and it will look at um, ways perhaps in which we can um, measure, identify, measure, and access these skills and be satisfied with the robustness of it, et cetera, and how you quantify it. And some examples uh, of um, some uh, really forward-looking uh, uh, um, collaborations on meta skills between colleges and other partners. Um, I was listening yesterday to Graeme Donaldson, uh, who's a former senior chief inspector of HMIE. He's now a prof at Glasgow Uni, one of the creators of Curriculum for Excellence. Um, and he uh, opened his um, a, a speech yesterday with talking about the great volatility uh, uh, in, in, in Scottish education since Curriculum for Excellence came on the market, if you want to put it like that. And then he talked about looking at, if this is 2021 and the pace of change from that has been so great, how will that look in 10 years time in 2031? And that, when you think about that, that's, that really uh, gives you an idea of what the pace might look like in the next few years. And there's been some tremendous papers which I'll refer to um, and which you can look at, um, which have really uh, uh, got people thinking ab ab about things. Um, but the pace of change, um, with the shifting global, uh, global supply lines, um, with the upsurge in artificial intelligence, uh, the, the, the less predictable uh, uh, world that we live in, conventional assumptions no longer being in, in play, um, the necessity for these types of skills, which are very human skills, are, is really important and that, that, that human beings are still in charge of the economy, of culture, et cetera, uh, technology. But um, when you look at Curriculum for Excellence and what it tried to do and, and where it is now, I, I believe that Curriculum for Excellence has been lost um, in the forest of agendas that have come out. And maybe it's about time that we look back, we went back to that and anchored ourselves fully with the four capacities. And how could we possibly um, anchor the meta skills that we want to develop broken down into the four capacities so that it gives us some kind of frame because we do have to reframe education we can't obviously go back to the days of one day in the year being the most important day which is results day thought that but that's gone so we have to now look at a much more uh, longer lasting nurture, nurturing type of atmosphere for for for, for our young people and our, and our, our learners so cur curriculum for excellence for me still holds good. I think it's, um, uh, uh, you know, you keep the curriculum under constant review and that's the most important thing. Um, in, our, in my presentation this morning, if we go to slide um, two, which is the kind of um, the big issues. If we go to the next one, John or Kenji. Uh, yes, there we are. So I want to talk today about 
all these con converging uh, 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 agendas that we, we, we have facing us today. Um, and I've called this uh, uh, rhetoric to reality because I think we, we need to face facts. Meta skills scares a lot of people. The term scares a lot of people. But we've got so many other agendas that we have to take care of that we, we need to face up to that. Uh, but we need to make, make it, need to be easy on ourselves so that it, it, it allows us to actually plan. I mean, you think about things like core skills, essential skills, all the skills that have been called, perhaps we just need to call things skills again, because these are, these are the skills that we need to, to survive as, as human beings in our cultures, in our economies, etc. But we do have um, uh, these converging agendas. We have a letter from the Deputy First Minister, which came out um, to the Chief Executives of SDSSQA, Education Scotland, and that came out before um, uh, the pandemic struck, but it still is an important uh, journey, a route map that the government wish us to take as, as, as educationalists. I want to talk about some innovative curriculum ideas and the collaboration and co-design, which is really important. And when we mean co-design, do we mean co-design or do we mean just influencing the, the curriculum, which is a, 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 it, is, it is a difference. There's a difference here, but it's still an important thing to produce. And then we talk, well, I want to talk a wee bit about qualifications and profiling and how we can make sure that we know our people are actually a, 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 a gaining the right, kind, the right kinds of skills. So it's important for that, that, uh, that from that point of view. Uh, next slide, please. The converging agendas, here, here's just some of them um, uh, uh, that uh, I uh, uh, have picked up on. Just recently, we've got the OECD review of curriculum for excellence, which will report in uh, June 2021. Um, it uh, may well be delayed because of the pandemic, but the meetings and the interviews, etc., have already started. And um, and and I think Anthony Mann, who was in charge of actually leading it, will want to uh, uh, have it um, uh, on the stocks for June 21 if they can. That is going to be a firm what. Curriculum for Excellence is all about. If you remember, when OECD reviewed it originally, they talked about uh, uh, what a, a, an excellent system it was for being able to devise and create the curriculum and keep it under review. We have the Future Skills Action Plan, um, which the government produced in 2018. Um, but it's got something that says, we want to develop and promote the definition and understanding of meta skills. And that is the rescue plan, if you like, or the, the, the way forward that the government want our economy to go in. We also have the, new, the, the, the more recent SFC review of coherence and sustainability and tertiary education, which does bring in our um, senior phase, but also into uh, shorter learner journeys, um, accelerating um, a, 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 these existing concepts that we have around whether the HNC goes into year one or year two and all the kind of uh, duplication problems that we've had in the past and which are very frustrating. Um, uh, we've got the completion of the DYW strategy, developing the young workforce strategy is completed in 2021. That's the seven year um, strategy is now complete. There's been very many successes in that, but I think the important thing to understand is that DYW is now a brand. We have, DYW groups, we have DYW coordinators who, in every authority, every school gets about a 0.5 DYW coordinator, who's generally a teacher. Um, uh, and, but anyway, the main thing is, is that now in every one of our schools, we have that. In colleges, we were bringing the DYW strategy completely on board to ensure that we were satisfying all of the agendas in there about unemployment and about making um, learning more relevant. The OECD Skills for Scotland report is actually a report um, on a, the apprenticeship system in Scotland. But again, it still has a lot of things in there around the types of skills we need to develop and how we can do it and to make some apprenticeships the right length of time to be able to do it and to have master levels in, in it too. So there was three main um, things in there that uh, were important for us. And the last thing is about qualifications. Um, 
we've got so many different types of qualifications now that one are uh, have lots of meta skills uh, measurements in them, such as a foundation apprenticeships, for instance. But since last summer, remember, we've had school teachers now assessing qualifications, grading qualifications, continual assessment. And that probably won't be lost, I don't think, in the future. They still want teachers to do that. And in doing that, that opens the door for a, 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 a full view, uh, uh, right the way through a person's learner journey of being assessed in the right way by, uh, by, the, by the teachers, by the lecturers and by employers. Uh, next slide, please, uh, Kenji. So these are the guidance letters that uh, I, 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 I mentioned. Um, and I took two, I've taken two quotes from them. So the first one is that this is from Mr. Swinney to the chief execs. And he is saying, I ask that um, uh, SDS, SQA Education Scotland and other partners and stakeholders work collaboratively to agree a language and how we can measure it and, ass and assess them. Um, and a, a lot of people feel nervous about the word assessment of skills. Um, uh, and, I, and, and I can see why. And I think um, it's probably more important to talk about the measurement of them rather than the assessment of them, which sounds a bit more formally and textbooky. Um, so that, that's the first thing, that's a directive, that's a, a, the guidance letter that went, went out. And we can start to see that's, that these organisations are now starting to sit up and take notice about how we can, how they can do that. So for instance, there's an imminent uh, SQA qualification in virtual work placement coming out. Um, and uh, I was in part of the team that talked about the principles behind that, what it should look like, but that will come out with as a proper qualification. So there's an example from, from SQA, Education Scotland are continually looking at meta skills and how we can uh, see their use and development in, in young people. And SDS, I'm going to talk later about a qualification that I just uh, mentioned to me yesterday um, um, on creative thinking at uh, SEQF uh, five and six. Um, uh, and with, with points attached. So there's lots of things on the, the go. Um, next one, please, Kenji. And here's another uh, paragraph from that letter. It says, I also ask SDS to work with Education Scotland, FEHE and Scottish Apprenticeship Board to explore e early opportunities to build meta skills into curriculum improvements within all learning programmes. So um, that gives you an indication of the, the travel, the route of travel that we have to be involved in. I know there's been lots of great work done on this. So it's about how do we, how do we share that? How do we understand it? How can it work in my backyard? Um, how can I make sure that my learners are getting the benefits that we see in these other types of programs? Some of them may not fit you at all, that's fine. But other will give you maybe a spark of an idea about how you can you can you can do that. We need to find a way to be able to uh, 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 contact each other and disseminate these types of things. Um, next slide, please. I've I've really just come up with some ideas. This, as I say, this is really a discussion forum for us to talk about the types of things that we um, need to consider. Common vocabulary to enhance the learner journey. Do we do we need a a, a common vocabulary around the skills. Which skills, for instance, um, are we attempting to help young people and adults and learners to develop? Are we just going with the blast approach where we say every skill, it's up to them, they choose the skill? Or is there a much more subtler way of saying, yes, we're going to, to choose a framework of skills that we think our young people need to navigate their way through the challenge of leaving education and training and going into employment. We need to embed the language of meta skills into learning and teaching practices. Um, that is probably the holy grail um, in all of this, because um, at the end of it, it needs to be done in the classroom, in the workshop, understood and recognized and actually part of learning and teaching. So, so that it becomes rigorous and it's, an essential part of the learning experience for the learner. And again, helping that is to make meta skills more overt in learning intentions and success criteria. How do we know that um, uh, uh, our learners are actually developing these types of skills? 
is it just somebody saying, yeah, I think you've got that skill. Yeah, that's okay. I'm, or, 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 or is it a more rigorous approach to, to the learner reflecting on it, um, evidencing it, and then being able to say, yes, I, I, I can do that role or I can do this, I, I can make that happen. That's the kind of thing I think we need to um, we need to we need to get to. And a colleague of mine, Klaus Mayer at Education Scotland, gave me a great mantra where he said ed- meta skills have to be evidenced, not assumed. And I think that's a really important way of looking at how we measure the success here. Um, I'm long enough in the tooth to talk core skills programs at college, and. Um, and, and I remember, um, and, I've, and when I've been an HMI, get in to see some of these activities as well, colleges and, and in schools, um, people just see core skills as a hoop. I've got to get through this and, and, and I'll, I'll do the best I can to get through it so I can get my qualification. Um, and and that's, that's the hard stuff. That's where we have to find an angle of attack on that because lots of colleges have tried to contextualise, have tried to make core skills more relatable to relatable to um, uh, work that people may want to do. Should we have meta skills that are actually related to labour market intelligence, to the kind of jobs, the types of opportunities that may be available beyond um, uh, education and training? And then, what do meta skills look like in a classroom or a place of work? How how do we know that if someone is uh, resilient and in, in a place of work? We have to be able to find a way to capture that because that's an important thing in today's world. Uh, next slide, please. Here's the 4.0 uh, uh, SDS uh, framework that uh, uh, that was uh, presented a few years back. It came about through um, a discussion they had globally with leaders in the field. Um, and they have the three pillars with the different types of uh, skills uh, uh, be- below it. Again, um, um, there's a lot there, and then when you see the fuller page, um, we can see lots of lots of sub skills, if you like, sitting below that. Um, so it's a big ask to say, well, what kind of skills does do do our learners need? And I think that's where a discussion has to take place between the learner, employers, and the college where they are able to say, well, we think you're going to need skills and initiative. If you look at the, the, the uh, World Economic Forum skills, I took a note of it just before I, I came in because if someone had sent it to me. Um, the World Economic Forum has a, a 2022 skills outlook and the growing skills that they say, there's 10 of them that they say will be uh, needed, we need to develop are things like active learning, creativity, critical thinking, leadership. So you can see a lot of it um, in, um, in this framework that um, SDS have developed. And that's a really good framework to, 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 to look at as a part of being able to say, well, if I'm going to talk about creativity, how, how can I develop the right kinds of skills within creativity, right kind of meta skills to prepare, young, to prepare our learners for a future and as I say, which is increasingly unpredictable. Um, if we go to the next slide, I think perhaps we have to also consider um, the reinvigorated CFE, which it will be next year. There's no doubt about that. It's our, uh, it's our main avenue of being able to uh, uh, create curriculum uh, for uh, uh, our, our young people and our learners and to have it as an experience and an outcome from that. Um, is curriculum for excellence a possible solution to capture meta skills? Can we anchor our meta skills that we're using in our colleges and our programs that we have to curriculum for excellence, to the four capacities, so that somebody who is uh, building up, say, a profile of skills, which we're going to talk about just shortly, when they build up a profile under the four capacities, are they able to say, here are my skills inside? those types of um, uh, skills, those types of capacities that, um, that, that we're talking about. And you have this as an online um, a type of approach where people are collecting and capturing that evidence base that I was talking about earlier, um, which can take a, a, a whole 
different way of, of of models. So it's important to understand that. I think this is one of the things that I'm looking at here as as a possible solution. It may not be a solution, and it's we've got to make mistakes and we've got to be allowed to do that. Um, people will say you're talking rubbish, Peter. I, I, you know, I don't think I can happen. That's great because we need to be able to consider all, all angles in this. I think. Um, and just the next slide to do with curriculum for excellence is around. Um, uh, Kenji, I think there's a couple of clicks we make on this. It talks about um, the two, all children and young people are entitled to experiences. And these are developing um, opportunities for their skills learning. So it's built in, it's central and key to curriculum for excellence. Um, and it's important that we understand that. And I think if you see, well, how does that work in reality? And the next slide, I think, helps us with that. So. Um, the next slide is about an example I, I heard about recently where we have um, Dundee City Council and their pedagogy team um, uh, who works uh, with, 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 with a school um, uh, 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 learners. And a member of that team has joined the Dundee Steering Group um, at SDS and looking at how meta skills might fit, fit the, correct, uh, the benchmark for experiences and outcome. And in that, Dundee and Angus College are very much involved. Um, and that kind of joined up approach and collaboration, but this gives you an indication of how uh, a, 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 a local authority is handling it. So that if we are sitting in colleges looking into what happens in schools and how we can accommodate that as it comes into the college environment, then we have to be able to say, look, they've got pedagogy groups that are looking at it and looking at how meta skills fit um, within the experience and the outcome. And so it's important that we, under, we understand that. Um, and the last slide, you'll be glad to hear, um, is about challenges. So if we're, if we're going to take this idea about the four capacities, can colleges use the four capacities as a framework to develop and assess meta skills? Um, undoubtedly, because um, when you look at where colleges are, how they've taken the agenda on and been able to develop it. There's a clear way that, that colleges have to be able to use those capacities to do that. And do the Curriculum for Excellence um, experience and outcome allow for that? That's, that, that, that's, the, that's, a, that's a key point because how many of us know what the experiences and outcomes are? From curriculum for excellence, we have to go back and refer refer to them. I've he, I've got a document here which is around um, uh, health and health and wellbeing, and that is about uh, where a lot of the, the skills will, will sit. And you can link the outcomes and experiences to that. And remember, curriculum for excellence always said the most important thing was the experience. Um, can colleges use my way? the My World of Work profiling tool to demonstrate meta skills for adults, learners? Yes, because I've, I've asked this question this week and I've been told that, um, <coughs> excuse me, the, the My World profiling tool can stay with the person for life. So those school leavers who have it coming into college provision can utilize My World to be able to uh, get the pro profiling tool augmented each time they develop a particular meta skill um, uh, 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 or the, the Achiever program. Can we use a patchwork of learner experiences and other activities to capture meta skills? Um, yesterday, I uh, had a great conversation with Helena Good and Lewis Gale, Gale from uh, SDS Scotland. Helena came, comes from Edu uh, Edinburgh College. And they've, um, uh, they're using uh, an organization called Daydream Believers. It's a Scottish website that talk about, they, they talk about PE for the brain. And it's about thinking around creativity. So they have developed um, a program using um, a, a online materials and, and preparing lessons for learners where the learner reflects on the improvement through a program which has 24 SCQF points or so attached to it, um, um, which is going to be piloted from the summer. Um, and 
they're looking for uh, organisations to be involved and I can assist with that. I haven't spoken to Helen, Helen yesterday. She's keen for people to, to do it. And I, I was taken with it because it's one of the first opportunities you see of an actual programme that goes the extra mile to measure a, a series of different things within creative thinking um, and gives the person a grading attached to it so that you can actually see and it's agreed with the teacher etc and this that's that's and that's that's a new one on us that's that's one of the first times that's happened um so i i i think that's a that's a really good way of doing it other ways um are trying to capture the accreditation how can we get on seqf how that then leads us into um other things access to university access to training, access to uh, college courses. And I know that Edinburgh College are looking at using um, the creative thinking uh, a qualification um, as, the, as, a, as, a, as a route for learners to come into their, their programs and seeing it as a, as a qualification for entry. Um, measurement reflected on by the learner and signed off by the teacher employer. Um, Again, this is a thorny issue. How do you how do you measure resilience? Um, how do you measure creative thinking? Um, and there's been lots of work done on it. So uh, the National Manufacturing Institute for Scotland um, held a session recently with SDS about um, the graduate apprenticeship meta skills that they want to assess, and um, they've developed a sliding scale of reflection and achievement. In the uh, in that program, which could easily be um, replicated in other types of programs, and I think that having that um, in our thoughts and, and uh, again as an example um, is really is really important because that can easily be uh, 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 replicated in other types of of programs. Um, and the last part is to talk about the many models. Um, we we do have this patchwork of um, uh, programs and, uh, and, and short programs, longer programs. We have them sitting within foundation apprenticeships. We have them sitting in uh, college courses, um, but how can they be accredited? And, and at the end, of, we, have to, we have to find a way to, to do this because it can't just be a good thing to do and a nice thing to do. It has to be something that gives you currency um, and, and moves you on and that you can demonstrate to people just what you've, what you've been able to, to do and what kind of person you are. Um, and, that, and, and, and as we go, as, if I go back to how, when I started this presentation and the types of skills that people are looking for and the fact that we're getting into a much more volatile world with artificial intelligence, but the human aspect being really important and survey after survey from employer telling us that this, what we're looking for are not qualifications. What we're looking for are skills that people have that they can come and be a really valued employee and take things forward for them and be productive. So um, that's been a kind of a, 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 a quick run through things. I know there's a lot in, in that. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, it may well be that um, uh, at one's, we speak to when John and Kenji get together again, it may well be that we think this, that, that there may be some merit in having another one of these sessions with a bit more in depth and a specific focus and things um, and, and getting more of these things disseminated. Uh, but I, I, I know that we have lots of networks already. We have CDN skills uh, networks. We have networks between colleges in different regions. Um, and these are fantastic. All we need to do now is make sure that we get full advantage from that. And it's the best thing we can do for our, for our learners. So at that, I'll leave it over to John and any questions or comments from you. Yep. Well, thanks very much, Peter. For that has been a very comprehensive. It was very good to look at the strategic end of the direction of travel and the very useful operational things that you've highlighted where people are already addressing uh, meta skills. Uh, for those uh, watching on YouTube. Uh, we'll complete our session there. And thank you for taking the time to look at the virtual bridge sessions.